guys, good morning. It is day 49 of my 52 day European backpacking trip. Only a few days left to go. And today I am doing a walking tour of Amsterdam. So it just started. And then after, planning on doing the Heineken experience, canal cruise, and we'll see what else. It's a little cold today. I definitely think I underdressed, but that's okay. I can always go back to my hostel and get my jacket if I really feel the need to. Which I might, unless it warms up considerably. Which let's hope it does. So this right here is where the Dutch East Indie and Company was, which you guys remember your history class. You know, they were the people who brought the spices over from India and Indonesia and everything. And they became, that's really what made the Netherlands so rich was all of the spices. And they became the richest uh, country in all of Europe during the 1600s and that started the Golden Age. And for people, like it grew the middle, middle class and people invested in art because of that and that's why like people like Rembrandt and stuff became really well known. So pretty interesting. Like I knew about the Dutch East Indian Trading Company that was the first piece of corporation ever and now they'd be like worth trillions of dollars. They're the company that's made the most amount of money in the whole world ever. Which is crazy. And started capitalism. So, yay? Not yay? And <laughs> This is a church that the pilgrims built. Yes, the pilgrims that went to America on the Mayflower and founded America, really. Came to Amsterdam before they went to England and caught the Mayflower. This is the church, can definitely has like a pilgrim old feel to it. It's very subtle, very austere looking. Definitely very different than all the other churches I've been to. Because they were saying pilgrims are very austere and strict. Much more strict than other parts of Christianity. Tour guide was saying that actually like, the reason they left Amsterdam is because the Amsterdam was too tolerant, too liberal for, for them. Needed it much less liberal. The buildings are being full. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I'm going. Oh my god. Oh, god. The tiniest house in Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> is that red house there? So folks, uh, skinniest house in Amsterdam at 1.8 meters wide. It's just behind me. If you can't see it, you're looking too broadly and you need to narrow your vision. <laughs> Remember I told you they used to charge you taxes according to the width of your building? Uh, so this would have belonged to the house next to it. Would have been a uh, their coach driver's quarters or servant's quarters, something like that. They didn't want to pay too many taxes for their servants. It does widen out though. The backside is five meters. So we just finished having lunch with some girls I met on the tour. Uh, they're traveling by themselves as well, and now I'm gonna head over to the Heineken Experience, and it'll be fun. The Heineken Experience, this is big, 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 big building right here. Not too long of a line, not that bad. Gonna do the world famous Heineken tour. Heineken, yeah. So inside of the Heineken Experience, oh wow. This guy, Gerard Adrian Heineken, founded it in 1864 at 22. That's when Heineken started producing beer that they would wear to brew the beer. Typical tanker. This is the bottle design in 1939 for Heineken. There's the old brand name. And then when Freddie Heineken came in, he rebranded it to look like the brand we know now, which is this right here. As a matter of fact, we don't use any chemicals in our beer at all. It's all natural with Heineken, and it's 95% water. Heineken is good for you, it's healthy, drink Heineken, <laughs> right? Come on. In order to get there, we need to use yeast, not any type of yeast, a yeast. Same yeast we have used for over 100 years, it's giving Heineken the honey flavor. So when we use, if we were using a different kind of yeast, Heineken wouldn't taste like a Heineken. And actually, this is the only beer that actually smells fruity, and if you've got a really good nose, 
smell the Here we got all where they actually make the beer. You can smell the barley. These look like they're just kind of now for design, just like the ones that Pilsner were. They're not actually used to brew the beer anymore. Oh, whoa. That's the barley steeping. That's cool. Look at me making beer, guys. I'm just stirring it all up in here. Look at me, a beer maker. Like your baby beer? All right, so this is just the first two steps in the beer process, just water and barley, which is basically sugar water. Not bad. Do you know what it tastes like? Is if you have like um like a wheat cereal, and like what the milk tastes like <laughs> with the cereal after. So it tastes like <gasps> horses. Oh, I love horses. Oh my god, the horses. Wow, so this is what the collars and stuff look like for Heineken horses. Horses have been a valued asset for, of our company since 1864, so since they opened. This is a ride, this is brew you ride. Broader experience. Are you ready for the trip of your life? If you've ever asked yourself how the perfect beer becomes the perfect beer, then you've come to the right place. You are about to experience the famous Heineken brewing process from the inside. That's right, we are going to brew you. Oh. <laughs> Here in the mash tun is where your brewing process begins. We take the powdery cracked malt and plenty of water, lots and lots of water. We mix the water and malt until it becomes mash. Oh. <laughs> the starch in the malt is transformed into sugar and we end up with a sweet liquid called wort. Now it's time to cook the wort. In other words, it's time to cook you. <laughs> Here in the wort kettle is where we cook or brew your mix and where we add the hops. Next, we use a high-speed whirlpool to separate your liquid from your solids. Now hold on tight to each other. The world's finest beer, ready to be bottled. Yeah, good luck. Perfectly filled every time, thousands of times a day. Now it's time for your crowning glory. Interesting experience. Oh, and it looks like we're the tasting parts. Yeah. Heineken. Best part, the tasting. Here I'm going to tell you how to taste, smell. The white foam is for protection. It is very important to a perfect Heineken. So the white foam head keeps the carbon dioxide bubbles in the beer. <coughs> So you can see if you hold it up to the light, all the bubbles are sticking underneath of your white foam head. So mm. this is very important. The second reason why there's a white foam and why it is protective is so oxygen from outside of your claws cannot enter the beer. See, so it's because if oxygen comes carbon in the dioxide beer, doesn't it escape and the oxygen the doesn't go in. It has a very negative effect on color, <coughs> smell, and taste of your beer. Does anybody know the Dutch word for cheers? Proust. Proust. Yes. One, two, three. Gross. Perfect. Now everybody enjoy your Heineken beer. All right. Well, I think I finished the tour. It didn't even take me an hour. Oh, it's super short. They said give yourself two hours. It wasn't even for an hour. It was really short. Very different than the other beer tour I did uh, in Prague which I'll leave a link to that below to check out that video. And I went to the Pilsner, because that was more actually showed you like how uh, the beer was brewed and showed you the barrels, and it was very much more like an in-depth look at how beer was made, so the bottling process. And this was definitely more kind of like an experience and actually like showing you the real process. So very different. This is definitely more commercialized. That's like a real like tour of an actual like, brewery in this. I don't know. Oh, so it looks like you can brew your own beer. That's kind of cool. I think I can write my name on it. Oh my god, I'm totally doing that. If that's the case, I'm totally getting a Heineken with my name on it. I'm the Heineken experience, guys! Put your Heineken bottles! 
But actually it wasn't the end of the Heineken experience. We still see everything. This weird bike thing. We record yourself biking on a Heineken bike in a photo booth. And then I think there's another bar too. So stimulate, I think, how you want to get the foam in. Yes, I'm old enough. <laughs> Heineken, and you see on it, it says Jade's Hero Trip. Yada. Y or Yada. Yada is apparently the Dutch version of my name. So Yada's Hero Trip. <laughs>
So at the lookout, where's there where they have the swing, but it's like a really crappy day today. <laughs> Shitty weather of Amsterdam, but hey, Amsterdam. Oh, very windy up here. I'm gonna do this swing that goes out over the edge. So I'm excited for that. That swing over there that goes over the edge. I had them record me because they, they wouldn't let me burn my camera on it. And I'm freezing. It's so cold. So I'm gonna go back down. So I'm ready to go and get warm because it's been 24 hours. It was fun, but oh my god. 